as I'm overlooking Santiago, the capital of Chile, I can't help to ask myself what happened with Chile during World War II. That's what you're gonna find out in this video. Keep watching. Hey, good to have you back on the channel. If you're new, my name is Stefan. I'm a Dutch history teacher and I like to cover history on location. Like right now, I'm in Santiago, Chile. And if you find this content interesting, consider subscribing, hit that notification bell. And if you want to support me, you can do that via Patreon, PayPal, or via Super Thanks. You can all find the information below the video. Oh, by the way, if you're from Chile, let me know what do you think about this video and this topic. Cheers. The best way to explain the attitude of the Chilean government during the Second World War is to look back at the previous international armed conflict Chile was involved in and that was the War of the Pacific 1879-1883. Here the country fought against Bolivia and Peru. Discovery of nitrates critical for gunpowder and fertilizer in the contested area in the hands of Bolivia and Peru led to an armed conflict in which Chile triumphed. During World War II both Bolivia and Peru cooperated with the United States and this caused fear among the Chileans because they feared that Peru and Bolivia might turn their attention to the lost territories of Chile. Now it never got to that point but this fear played a crucial role among Chilean politicians during the Second World War. Prior to World War II Chile had a huge German population. Most of them had immigrated to Chile in the mid 19th century. They were welcome because the Germans were known to have a strong work ethic and Germany itself was not a strong state that could put pressure on Chile. Germany would be united in 1871. But even after that, Germans migrated from Europe to Chile. For example, after 1918, when Germany was defeated in the First World War. In 1885, officers of the Imperial German Army began to train Chilean officers. Officers from Chile visited Germany for training. And you can clearly see the Chilean army uniform of that time was inspired by the German one. There also existed a Chilean Nazi party, the National Socialist Movement of Chile. In 1938, a coup attempt was ruthlessly put down by the Chilean government forces, known as the Seguro Obrero Massacre. An offshoot fascist party, the Popular Socialist Vanguard, was set up, which was later disbanded in 1941. Let's take a look at the relations with the United States of America, because these were not favorable. Many Chileans resented the US and this had several causes that lie in history. For example, in 1866, when Spain attacked the Chilean coast and the US refused to intervene. I mean, it's understandable because the US just came out of a civil war, but for many Chileans, this was not. The US also disapproved of the Chilean annexations of the former Peruvian and Bolivian territories after the War of the Pacific. And then during the Chilean Civil War in 1891, the US supported the losing side. And in the same year, there was also an incident in Valparaiso involving US sailors in a riot. And in 1930, during the Great Depression, the US excluded Chilean products which worsened the economic situation in Chile. In December 1941 the US was attacked by Japan at Pearl Harbor. Chile did not immediately break off diplomatic relations with the Axis powers. It would take a while. The ruling party did not want to alienate its German voters and no one could predict how the war would turn out. Maybe Japan would soon dominate the Pacific and this could bring Chile into danger. When foreign ministers of Western Hemisphere countries convened in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil early 1942, the US assured Chile that it would use its fleet to come to Chile's aid once it would be attacked by Axis powers. To which Foreign Minister Juan Bautista Rossetti responded, what fleet? The one sunk at Pearl Harbor? Rossetti, being of Italian background, was clearly partial to the Axis. The next month, Juan Antonio Rios defeated the conservative Carlos Ibanez. It turned out that Germany had supported the latter's political campaign, while the campaign of Rios, the Popular Front, was supported by the British. In March 1942, a German submarine sunk a Chilean merchant ship, allegedly by mistake. Diplomatic relations remained intact. Juan Antonio Rios assumed presidency in April 1942. His foreign minister was Ernesto Barros, who had pro-Axis sympathies. He viewed himself as a Chilean nationalist and saw the war as a war between imperialistic powers and saw no reason to cut off diplomatic relations 
with the Axis, even when he was presented with evidence of German espionage activities in his country. In the latter half of 1942, President Rios chose to align his country with the rest of the Western Hemisphere and close diplomatic posts of the Axis in his country. Little by little, Chilean foreign policy became more and more pro-allies and less neutral. Several factors attributed to this, but the most obvious one was the fact that the Allies were winning the war. In August 1942, five Brazilian merchant ships were sunk by German submarines, killing hundreds. The Chilean government publicly condemned the German attack and Brazil declared war on the Axis powers. At the end of the year, some Germans were deported from Chile, but overall diplomatic relations remained intact and the US put more and more pressure on the country to disrupt these relations. President Rios wanted military and financial guarantees before taking the extreme step of a diplomatic rupture. And the anti-US sentiments were one of the main reasons why Chile was hesitant to disrupt diplomatic relations with the Axis. But then it turned out that the US was shipping weapons and munition to both Peru and Bolivia for a possible confrontation with the Axis powers. And Chile now feared that these weapons might be used against them as Bolivia and Peru still had their negative sentiments towards Chile because of the outcome of the War of the Pacific. Chile asked the US for weapon deliveries, but these were predictably refused. As long as Chile maintained relations with the Axis, Axis agents would quickly acquire detailed knowledge of whatever arms and munitions the United States might send to Chile as well as to their location and intended use. The value of the weapons for hemisphere defense would accordingly diminish. And so, in January 1943, the Chilean Senate voted in favor of diplomatic rupture with the Axis powers. The streets of the capital are thronged as Santiago hears the news that Chile has severed relations with the Axis. The United Nations have reassured this important South American Republic that they can and will help her protect her 3,000 miles of coastline. Yet the fear of stepping out of line with the Allies remained, especially when Bolivia declared war on the Axis. Now pro-US sentiments in Chile rose, especially when the Allied powers conquered Rome without destroying its religious buildings and also when Paris was swiftly liberated. It was not until February 1945 when Chile officially joined the Allied powers and it did not commit troops to the war effort. German espionage activities continued all the way till March 1945, when veteran spy Albert Julius von Appen, aka Apfel, was arrested. Because of the war, Chile lost some of its export markets, but via a trade agreement with the US in 1943, the US made up for it. It was, however, the Second World War, rather than President Rio's economic wizardry, that brought the renewed prosperity in these years. Mineral production, stimulated by American demand for copper, rose by approximately 10%. The output of the manufacturing sector, functioning for the first time without foreign competition, climbed by almost half. Chile successfully remained neutral during the First World War, but during the Second World War it became apparent that the world had changed. Chile could no longer remain neutral. And with the Allies winning the war and the potential risk of Peru and Bolivia wanting to settle old scores, it would have been foolish not to join the Allies. In the end, the war had negative repercussions for Chile in both the short and long terms. Chilean neutrality caused the country in terms of weapons, finances and goodwill. It also left German file politicians and military officers in place with their reputations intact. If you want to learn about Colombia during World War II, click here and click here for my video about Peru in World War II. Thanks for watching. Adios.